Hello everyone and welcome to this series focused on developing for UWP. In this section I'll briefly cover the async await concept that developers will see quite often in UWP app development and hopefully it will give you a better understanding as to what it does, why you do it and some things to look out for. So to give you an understanding, async await helps your application to be responsive and stay alive when the code behind it is uh, performing a long or power intensive operation. For example, downloading a large amount of data from a web service. Now what async await is sort of doing here is pushing that work off the UI thread and allowing the application to just carry on and eventually once that operation is completed will return the results back onto the same context that the method was executed from. So for example uh, in this scenario would be the main UI thread and that will allow you to update the UI. Now, when you're developing with the Windows APIs with, for UWP, near enough all of those APIs will use async await methods. And you'll find this uh, quite often in, in the storage file APIs, for example, or the networking APIs. So to give you a quick example leading off um, what, what we, before what we were considering around the downloading of data from an API and updating the client UI, in a traditional application, a, a user might click a refresh button to get some new data and update the UI. Now, what this does is essentially locks the UI from responding until that synchronous uh, network request has completed. Now, what this can do is trick Windows into believing that your application has crashed or is uh, becoming unresponsive, particularly if the user is unsure what's happening and starts clicking around the app or tap tapping on the screen. And it's a bad user experience and should always be avoided. Now, what asynchronous apps uh, try to cover on the other hand is allowing the user to perform other interactions in the application while waiting for the response to complete. So for example, the user might click that refresh button, but when they navigate to a different page, uh, they can do. They can, they can click on another page and it will navigate them there. But that execution of that operation is still going on in the background and will eventually get returned back to the main UI thread. So you can update the UI in the background so when that user comes back to that page, they can see the new data. So, what method return types are available for async? There are three. They are task, a, a generic task, so you can return a, a type of object, and void. Now, you've probably heard people talk about async many times, saying that you should always return a task. Now, that's technically true, but there are occasions where it just isn't possible, and I'll cover those in a second but the best practice is always to return a task. So for example, where you might be returning void, return a task. Or if you're re returning an object, return task of type object, where appropriate that is. So an example where you can't do this is um, when you want to return void from an asynchronous event handler. You can't return task here because event handlers shouldn't have a return type. So there are some things you need to be aware of um, and one in particular is um, how to handle exceptions in asynchronous methods and, uh, and there are some issues when you're doing this with a void asynchronous method but I'll cover that in, a, in another episode. So the last topic that I'd like to talk about quickly is when to use configure await false. Now Here's a scenario, uh, and I'll just leave this up on the screen uh, for a little while while I, while I cover the topic itself. But here's a scenario. When you're wanting to wait for a result, but you don't actually care about the result itself. If that's your scenario, then it's, this is where configure await false is most likely needed. And what I mean by this is that if you're not updating your UI with a result of an asynchronous method, configure await false will push it off onto a different thread which will then end up resolving it at a later date. And in this scenario, and I'll cover this in a second, it's um, using, oops, sorry, it's um, using configure await false showing the downloading of a file asynchronously when a button is clicked. Now in the first method you can see uh, that we start the downloading of the file asynchronously and we're, apply we're applying uh, this configure await false. We're doing this because we don't care about the result on the original context, which is the UI thread, which you can see is coming from the method below. So this um, download button on click. 
when the, the button's clicked, that event is being fired on the UI thread. So anything we're doing in this method is being fired on the UI thread. But once we hit this um, asynchronous method that we're awaiting, and we start this download async, we're configuring that to uh, await false because we just don't care about that data. Now, then when we write out the data to the file locally, again, we've, we're configuring this to false because we don't care about the file being written out because we, it's not a result we care about at the moment. Now, you don't actually need the second configure await false because the context has already changed by the first configure await false, but it's always best practice to do this if you're not going, you know, if you don't care about the result. Um, so in this second method, and I'll explain what's going on here, the download button on click, um, this is being called from the UI thread. Now, the reason we're not setting configure await false on this um, asynchronous method, so this await download file async passing through the, uh, the text from the file name text box, is on the next line, you can see that we're updating a text block uh, text with um, download succeeded. If we decided to configure await false here, we would change the the um, the context of of this of this method that's been currently run. And when that asynchronous method has finished and returned an, a result, when we hit this progress dot text equals download succeeded, we will get an exception thrown because it's not being um, up, that UI is not being updated on the UI thread because we're no longer on it. So in this instance. Where we're not configuring await false, and it's allowing us to carry on once that um, ex that task is uh, completed to run on the UI thread. So hopefully that makes a bit more sense. But there are there is a scenario where you might may accidentally, or you um, or the, the others a, a, a scenario which you can't control where configure await false has already been set, and you need to update the UI. Now there is a way to do this. And uh, you can either remove the configure await false, uh, which is one option, or you can get hold of the UI's core dispatcher. Now, what this is, is the UI dispatcher, and it allows you to run another task back on the UI thread. It brings it back into context. And you can do this in your UWP app uh, beforehand by getting a reference to the current Windows dispatcher by calling window.current.dispatcher, and you can run your UI action from there. So hopefully this has given you a, a, a brief understanding of what configure await false does, and hopefully this entire video has given you uh, an understanding as to what async await methods do. And if you have any questions, feel free to just drop them in the comment section down below. I'll be happy to respond to any, any questions that you have around async await. And I hope to see you in the next episode.